everyone, welcome back to season two of Car Stories. So good to start this all up again. Yeah. For episode one of season two, we thought we'll shoot my car and tell my story. So I've got two of our good friends, Lucas and Eric, here to help us out. Lucas was the stunt double driving the car, and Eric is going to interview me in this one. So let's see how this goes. Please call me Prabhul from this moment forward. <laughs> I'm not Eric. Should I be Eric? You can be Prabhul. <laughs> we'll both be Prabhul. P1, P2. All right. So I got the poll. Oh, <laughs> no, I'll be P1. He's uh, P2. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's your day. Let's go. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you all enjoy the little cinematic sequence towards the end of the video. Definitely go check it out. This one's a bit rusty because we're just been a long winter. It's been a long cold winter. Yeah. It's nice to do this again to get it in drive. This is our first one. Weather has been good. It's been cooperating. No rain. So we get to get out and shoot this. It's, it's good. And I get to ask the questions today. It, I don't know what's easier, asking the questions or answering the well, questions. Well, you don't know I'm going to ask, so you just wait. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, let's cue the little bit of B-roll, tease the video before we get into the interview. Pass this on to Eric. He's going to start asking the questions. All right. The, where do we start? You might you get comfortable because uh, we're gonna we're gonna go deep uh, on this episode. <laughs> like therapy. Um, you know, ki kidding aside. So uh, Prabhul, uh, you know, I, I was like, you know, to talk about your car journey. What does your car resume look like? What are, what are your first cars? What are, what are the ones that meant uh, meant something to you? So going back, I mean, I haven't had the number of cars that you've had. Uh, my first ever car was a Hyundai Tiburon <laughs> of all the cars. The Shark. Yeah, yeah. That, that's all I could afford at the, yeah. at the time, but it did look like a Shark. Yeah. Uh, it was quite amazing. Uh, and I enjoyed that as well. It was a manual. That's how I learned a manual. Uh, rear wheel drive? Uh, no. It was from front okay, the Genesis one. Okay. It was before the Genesis came out. Right. First few minutes of driving the car, get a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was a beautiful car. I uh, learned to drive with it. I drove it in the winter, didn't do winter tires. I did all seasons. The YOLO, winter. YOLO. I couldn't afford it. I, I, the same. I think all of us had that sort of, you know, you spent any money you had was just to make the car maybe look better, yeah. perform better, not, not be safe. The crazy part was I was fresh here in Canada. I didn't have any record. You had no winter driving experience. Nothing. <laughs> so that was my first ever winter with, with it driving. And my insurance was super expensive. I was paying almost 500 a month. That, that'd be more than your car payment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was about the same as car payment. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I was just squeezing by trying to make things happen. Uh, but then as time goes by, you know, I, my job got better, uh, increase in salaries and all that allowed me to get into a, what was it? A Mazda RX-8. Okay. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, it wasn't a three door. Is that, was that the way you well, describe it? Well, it had suicide doors. On both sides? Both sides. Okay. And I would say it's one of my, my favorite cars I've owned. Really? Uh, and I've, I've always been sort of chasing after that, that driving experience where it was very raw, it was very analog, not a lot of power, okay. but the RXA was just a beautiful car for me. It drove so well, such a lively front. I, I think it'd be funny for the audience and myself to hear you say that sitting in front of this beautiful car, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> the journey, okay. a, as you're, capacity to afford these cars increase over time i think your desires change as well you realize okay i can open my doors to other potential right. experiences uh, the rx8 was a beautiful car but it was like a ticking time bomb did, did you modify it at all no no, no. i i was anti-mod because i 
You hadn't met some bad influences uh, yeah. at that point in your life. Yeah. <laughs> and that changed a lot after I met these uh, influences. Yeah. You didn't say bad influences. You just said influences. I think it was all in... It, it was meant to be. Okay. So right. I wasn't going to challenge it. And I was like, I, I wanted to do those type of mods. I just didn't know where to start yeah. and to do it right. And, and that was always a finicky motor to even tinker with anyway. So, so that's one of the reasons why yeah. I got rid of it. Um, right. Because around 60,000 kilometers... People are talking about engine blowing, yeah. apex seals giving out, and it's an engine rebuild and things like that. I'm like, man, I'm just making by, and I don't want any kind of unforeseen expenses to right. push me over. So I got rid of that car. Ended up getting a, an Audi A4. Okay, like base, not S line. No, 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 I couldn't okay. do S line. Okay, I wasn't quite there. Uh, but uh, yeah, transitioning from an RX8 to an A4. For the practicality. Okay. I was in Toronto and I was going back and forth Toronto, Ottawa. And the RXA, just the fuel efficiency was right. crap. I wouldn't make it all the way to Toronto on a full tank of gas. A horsepower in RXA, 230? Two, 230, 240. Okay. But it was 160 foot pounds of torque. Right. But because it was a rotary, it drank fuel like a right. V8. Okay. So I wouldn't make a full trip to Toronto on a full tank. Oh, wow. The, and then the A4 was the thing that changed my perspective of cars. That's when I went from- First German car. First German okay. car, quattro, all wheel drive, winter. Wow, I was like, this is what I've been missing in the- in, in I'm the not almost winter. dying yeah. every winter, this is great. But I, I will say this, rear wheel drive in the winter is a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Living on the edge, <laughs> it was fun. Okay, well, you've always been a risk taker. I'm sure it was a risk coming to Canada as a, you know, as a, as a teenager and- uh, yeah. well, risk, But risks pay off, Yeah. Right? So bigger risks, bigger rewards, oh. and I'm maybe kind of plateauing on on the type of risks I'm willing well, to you're take. You're getting older, you yeah. Know, kids, family, all that stuff. So Audi A4, then what? That's when uh, I, that's when I met Kim uh, with A4. We've had it for a couple of years, and then we I moved back to Ottawa, and I made the Audi S5 happen. Okay. Audi S5 manual. This was the B8.5. Okay. Is the facelift version of the. It was a 2013 Audi S5. Yeah. German engineering. I loved it. It was a supercharged V6. You had a great Audi experience with A4. You're okay. Again, stock. Okay. Didn't modify it. Oh, wait. I did modify it. I got wheels, okay. uh, but I didn't lower it. Ooh. <laughs> That's a, Lucas is off camera. <laughs> I, I could hear him smoking yeah. back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, in hindsight, looking back at my S5, with those wheels, the wheels look great. It was niche Targa wheels, mm -hmm. but the wheel gap was atrocious when I look back at it now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I got springs, but I never did anything with it. I just let it sit in the basement. The, the springs sat in a box in the basement? Yeah. Saying? I still have it, it okay. hasn't been opened. So if okay. you guys want a set of uh, springs for a V8.5 S5? S5, all right, let me know. Everything must go, we will not be undersold. <laughs> Uh, okay, so S5 to, I'm and trying to S4. get S4, okay. From the S4 uh, to the RS5. Well, you've left out an important car. So that's my daily driver. Okay. So when I have the S5, I managed to squeeze in a BMW Z4. Okay. The 2005. And that was, that was a fun car to drive. Now, did you track that car? When did you yes. get into, okay, so. So I tracked it with the S5. Okay. and realized the S5 was just a heavy beast yeah. on track. Brakes were overheating. Well, not overheating, but it, it was pushing, the car was just not as- and Was the S, S5 Artronic or? Manual. Manual, okay, it was manual. manual. Okay. And then when I got to the S4, I couldn't do manual. If I could do manual, if Audi still offered a manual in the S4, then uh, what was it, 2018 generation, I would have done it. Okay. But got rid of it because it was black and I hated it. Just keeping cl trouble, keeping clean. Uh, it's just it was just brutal. Right. I could see all of the the line, the the webbing and everything. It was too much for me. Uh, but in that in that lineup, I had the Z4 for quite some time. Okay. Uh, did all kinds of stuff to it. Modified it. That I modified. I put coilovers on it. Okay. Uh, three way adjustable coilovers, and it drove so well. And was that purpose built to to, to track, track it? Yeah. That's why you did so this. fast okay. wheels. Uh, coilover suspension. There was a custom built suspension for the Z4. There's okay. a company out of Montreal that does custom uh, uh, coilovers. Okay. That was just awesome. So you're at this point in your life where you have a second car, a toy, uh, and then how long do you keep that before you Three years. upgrade your toy? Three years. Okay. Some extra cash came my way. 
Okay. And I was like, okay, what's next? And that's where a 911 GTS kind of got into the mix of it. And, and your, yours was a special uh, rear wheel know. drive. Yeah. 911, 997.2. Carrera, Carrera 2 GTS, so it was the wide body variant. Okay. Uh, I had to get rid of the Z4. I had no idea what I was getting into with the 911 GTS. Right. Is, is that like Porsche, like in a good way or? I didn't know what to expect. I enjoyed the way the car drove. It was a manual, six speed manual. The GTS I got without knowing how important the GTS was. Mm -hmm. Maybe at that time a GTS was not that special maybe, because uh, I paid good money for it. Yeah. And I didn't sell, I sold it for just about the same to get this guy. Right. Uh, but that was raw, yep. engaging, yeah. a direct driving experience. It, it was just you in the car. Yep. There are no control nannies or anything other than traction control to keep you safe in some ways. Uh, I miss that car. Yeah, it, it, rarely an episode of anything comes up that you don't lament the sale of that car. So well, that's why it's here. Yeah, I get to look at it from here now. Yeah, yeah, the one that got away. So you've you've gone from Mazda, Hyundai, Audi, Porsche. Yeah, stayed in the German world. What, you know, if, if you identified or affiliated with with one brand more than than any other, which one would it be? You know, it's crazy, but. For a good chunk of that journey, I was more of an Audi yeah. person. I just loved the sharp lines of an Audi. Yeah. Uh, but now I think I'm more towards the Porsche lineup. Right. So if I can have both a Porsche and an Audi in the fleet right. uh, for as long as I can, right. uh, that would be the way to go. Yeah. I think that makes sense when you think about your car journey at the, that time in the automotive world. Mm -hmm. Audi was doing great designs yeah. around 2010. The R8. Right. I think they were leading the way. Uh, at that point in time, so it makes sense. But now you'd say more, more in the camp of, of Porsche. Porsche. Because I think Audi stopped making these sort of raw uh, enthusiast cars, which makes it hard for us to, yeah, for me at least, to think about what's next. Right. You know, if I was progressing in the Audi world, you know, if I wanted a manual Audi, I couldn't get it. Right. Now, in the Porsche world, if you wanted that raw driving experience and have that engagement with a manual, you could still have it with the Porsche. Yeah, it feels like Porsche is still no. protecting that segment yeah. uh, of the market. Yeah, they understand the enthusiast segment a bit yeah. more, whereas Audi is more focused on the daily usability. Yeah. You know, it's such an easy car to drive, yeah. such an easy car to drive fast. Right. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not knocking on them. Yeah. I still love my Audis. Uh, and you still own one. Yeah. Their side, so exactly. You're still half, half, halfway there. Yeah. And so we're, we're going to talk about the GT3 RS uh, today. We've seen some great footage of it. <laughs> Uh, name three things that you think make this car special. First, I think it's the the overall design. It's just a polarizing design for me. The color, the wing, the wide body, it's yeah. just, it's got presence. Okay. Nothing compared to what the 992 GT3 RS is, mm -hmm. but I almost prefer this. It's got a bit of elegance and boldness to it and not over the top, like yeah. the, the new GT3 RS. I, I would think if you got the new 992 GT3 RS, you'd almost feel a sense of guilt if you weren't tracking it. Yeah. Like if yeah. that wasn't the you yeah. know the intent and purpose of the car, whereas this, you can still street, you do track it, but it, it still is okay yeah. on the street. Yeah. yeah. And surprisingly, this is more compliant on the street than my RS5. Okay. As crazy as it may sound, it just absorbs the bumps better okay. than the RS5. The RS5, it's not either too harsh or too soft, and it feels like you're in this waterbed in the car. This is just that happy medium. It just takes it. Okay. So, th so like visual appeal, that's that's one. It, the, what it the sounds. This, it sounds oh, the glorious. Oh. Yeah, that's what sold me on the car. Yeah. As much as the 997, was such a raw car it had great sound as well i didn't mod the exhaust right. so i don't i mean i only hear from what it is there but pushing this to 9000 rpm yeah. it's funny the sound is on your top three list i talked to your neighbors and they said it was the the thing they hated most about your car so yeah at 5 a.m this morning they appreciate it okay yeah. <laughs> they, it only happens once a week they love your videos i'm sure <laughs> yeah. it's, good. it's good so uh, visual appeal sound i think the third piece will be the, the driving aspect of it. You know, previous cars were, it's all about the, the raw driving experiences. With the GT3 RS, you have all of these controls, like you got rear wheel steer. Uh, I think there's more electronic aids in this yeah. car.
to keep it driving well, but it still engages you as a driver. Electronic steering compared to hydraulic steering, yeah. it doesn't feel that different. This feels so much more direct and compliant. Okay. And I love that about it. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's a great nod to Porsche engineering. They, they generally get things right. Mm -hmm. It's great. Well, I, I, I would say there was a transition from 2018, maybe? Was it 2018? No, the first generation of the 991.1 yeah. When they transition from hydraulic to so electric. 20, 2013, 2012. 20, 2012, yeah. yeah. That hydro, uh, electronic suspension was, n or not suspension, but steering was not as good. Right. People complained about it being sort of numb and not so yeah. good. But then dot two, they really sorted that out. It seems to be the way. The dot one is sort of, you know, they get the gremlin sorted out in the dot twos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so most would say this is you know, the perfect car as it sits. You couldn't possibly need to mod it or upend the balance. Now, unfortunately, most aren't your friends. <laughs> so, most people. So, uh, what what modifications have you done, if any, uh, to your 911? So, this car's got a GMG exhaust. Okay. So, the center muffle is deleted, and it's got um, a cage, a roll a cage, roll cage inside as well. Okay. This was courtesy of the previous owner. So kudos to, or thank you, previous owner, for doing all that. Those are things I was going to do with the car anyways. Uh, yeah. But maybe in the future we'll do some wheels, okay. uh, maybe some Mante racing suspension if, the car, if I keep the car long enough. But, and you've done something to the suspension, right? Yeah, we, we tried to adjust the suspension by lowering the front yeah. um, a, a tad. And we lowered the, the rear a tad as well. Uh, but I'm not quite happy with how it, it drives with that configuration now it's a bit too darty because i think there's a bit of a rake you know all the porsche peers are saying i told you so i know you shouldn't have messed with it how dare you so this car was meant to be a, a pure driver's car, like driver's car keep yeah. it as pure as possible by not touching it from a driving perspective right i would still change the exhaust and maybe do a, a cosmetic stuff to it uh, but the suspension in hindsight i would likely just leave it as is from factory going forward okay and, and so you say Porsche Pierce car, how, how do you use this? Is it a track car, weekend car, of course, sunny weather car, daily driver? It's a, I, I got this with the intention of it being like a weekend special. Okay. Uh, and then taking a track maybe four times a year type thing. Okay. So in the summer, we'll take it out four times. Uh, at least we try as much as we can, but uh, mainly a weekend special. And so when Saturday or Sunday rolls around, we're doing cars and coffee. I just feel special getting in the car and yeah. driving off with it. I think a lot of us can can relate to that. That's how we most of us use our cars. So that's cool. And it sucks because the more you spend on these cars, the more people say you don't have the time to enjoy them and you want to enjoy them more. Yeah. Sometimes this will sit for a couple of weeks without yeah. being driven at all, right? I think I've said the paradox of having nice things is the things you have to do to afford them yeah. doesn't lend you a lot of time. Yeah. So what is what is the one, you know, if you think about uh, the one thing that makes you want to drive this car? There's so many different things that I love about this car. I don't want to sound superficial or anything like that, but I love, it's a love-hate. I love the fact that when I take it out, it turns heads. But at the same time, I don't like the fact that it turns heads. Right. Because it brings a lot of attention. People are like, whoa, what is that? Right. And you could see it from miles away almost, yeah. right? Everything's a spectacle, right? Yeah. You can't just go get a coffee without... Yeah. And well, I mean, the, co the color certainly doesn't help right that that's the, yeah. the big piece of it yeah that's good <laughs> i love this color the uh, lizard green launch spec car yeah. and now if you want to get a lizard green it's it's a, it's it's a, PTS. a pts option they've kind of scaled back everything it's got carbon ceramic brakes all the the things i care about yeah. this car has yeah well that, that's i mean that's the porsche way right they see what their customers like and then they charge them for it yeah. that's why this was special i think this is probably one of the best GT3 RS spec, they came out with launch. Right. So at launch, they couldn't have done any better than this. Right. Polarizing color, green seats inside as well. Yeah. It just everything just sort of really worked. You, well. You're right. If you if you had a base, like a base level, that's how those are the changes you might make to it. You do the inserts. Mm -hmm. uh, there's companies that offer that. And you'd probably do it to color match the car. Well, they they've already taken care of that. Yeah. Of course, you'd want it with PCCBs. Yeah. Yeah, so it makes, makes sense. So this, this leads to the question probably, you've all asked all of us, is this your forever car? I like to think it is, but I know it's not. 
I appreciate your honesty because I, I was going <laughs> to call you out if you said it was. Go, go on and, and tell us more about that. Why? Why do you feel that way? So as much as I love this car, the one thing that I find missing in the overall driving experience is a manual. Mm -hmm. As much as people will argue and say manual is not the whole, the only thing. Right. A PDK is faster yeah. on track. It's more compliant. You you could get better lap times. But for me, it's not just about straight line speeds or lap times. It's about the engagement in the driving right. uh, of the car as well. So for me, in low ends in the city, where we do a lot more of our driving, majority of our driving right. with this car, I miss some interaction with the car. Yeah. Yes, you can sit there with the with the gear lever and kind of do sequential gear shifting kind right. of thing. Uh, but it's not the same as you know using your left foot, clutching right. in, getting that timing right to gear in, clutch out. It just there's more engagement. Right. So I'd love to be able to add or replace uh, this with another 911 of some sort with a manual. Okay. Did you ever go back to a 997.2 manual? I would if a, a good spec showed up. Okay. Uh, I, I, I might, I might get into it. Okay. All right. But we've seen the podcast. If, if you've been watching our podcast as well, you'll know I have this vision for a 911 that does it all. Yeah. Winter driving, summer driving. You put a tent on the roof. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> camping out. Have you ever been camping once in your life? No, I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have twice. Okay, twice. Okay. Okay, maybe three. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay. So, so Prabhul, then uh, your your you know followers of your channel, or your page will know you're always on the hunt. You're you know playing with configurators. So, what's the future hold for you? What's what's coming up? So, if it becomes reality, I've been waiting on a GT3, a 992 GT3. I've been on the list for almost three years. It feels like now. Mm -hmm. And if that becomes reality, I do a PTS GT3 manual. PTS GT3 manual. Okay. And then this will go. And there's a GT4 RS that I'm on a list for as well. That might be a more likely thing to happen this year or next year, because 992 GT3 are pretty much all sold for or, or spoken yeah. for. They're right. not making any more. So we have to wait for the dot two right. uh, GT3. So in that window of time, if a GT4 RS comes along, this might take a cake. P provided it, it's the spec that you yes. want. They're, you get to pick what you want, not what they tell you you can have. Yeah, buckets, PCCBs, are a must. Okay. And right now there's a stop sale on right. PCCBs and there's rumors that there might be a stop sale on bucket seats as well. Wow. So we'll see if that doesn't happen and they introduce the carbon ceramic brakes back into the GT4 RS. And if so, I will do that. PTS. Okay. So you yeah. have your race car. Yeah. And then something fun daily. Yeah. And anything else sitting at a dealership right now? <laughs> waiting, well, waiting for you to bring it home? I, there is a BMW M2, the new G87. Okay. The car that everyone seems to be hating on. People are hating on that car? You, you don't no, know? No, I no. It's, oh. I, oh yeah, it's been, it. like if you look at the forums and what people yeah. are saying about the car, it's like, this is atrocious. What, we, what was BMW doing? Really? But for me, in my eyes, I think it looks good. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it looks, be a fun car to mod. Yeah, mm. it's a, a modding platform. Yeah. It's out of the box. It doesn't look great like 911s yeah. do out of the box. Uh, but with some modifications, I think the M2 would be a good driver's car. And it'll get you rowing through the gears again. Yeah, exactly. It'll work out that left leg because yeah. the muscle is atrophied in your clutch leg because you don't have any yeah. manual cars right now. No. Right. And I'm missing that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so GT4 RS, M2. And then eventually a GT3. Awesome. If that roadmap works out, right? Okay. Well, I'm sure it will. You work hard and good things will happen. All right. So that 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 brings us to the end of Car Stories episode one. Yeah. We flipped the script. Yeah. Do you want me to close it out because you always forget or do you? Oh, no. I, All right. I mean, it's up to you. We could do okay. both ways. So do, if you like the video, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button. And don't forget to pound that notification bell. <laughs> you thank you. Yeah, there you go. Nailed it well, I also say thank you all for watching this one. I oh, hope boy. you all enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for more because we've got a couple of cars lined up. Hopefully some special cars as well. Oh. So we, we're going to talk to a few people, get some things arranged. And... I, I've seen the list. It looks promising. Yeah. Thank you for flipping the script. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> thank you. Bye.